While most of my character's faces are rigged with bones, cheeks are often an exception. The deformation bone layer of the face does control the cheeks to an extent, but when it comes to a broad deformation like puffing the cheeks or adding some jiggles, it becomes tedious. Shaped keys could be a good secondary option, but I'm not a fan. I'd need a whole set of keys to cover a good range of expressions. Instead, I prefer to use lattices. If set up correctly, the lattice deformation can be added on top of the armature deformation, without replacing it or creating double transformation issues. First, let's add a lattice and place it around the cheek. Rotation and scale don't really matter as long as it happens in object mode. Just place it in a way that looks good to you. I don't plan to use soft body simulation or fancy controllers for those cheeks as I only care about broad control so I'm not going to subdivide the lattice. Just know that this is an available option too. Give it a relevant name. Then duplicate it. To symmetrize it, you can right click on it and choose mirror on global X. Add a minus in front of the X location value to put it on the right cheek. Next, we'll want vertex groups to control the effect of the lattices. Make one per cheek. The center of the cheek should be bright red and gradually fade away. The weights often need to be readjusted later on. Once that's done, it's time to add lattice modifiers to the mesh. Here, I already have an armature modifier and a corrective smooth modifier. The latter helps a lot to get a clean deformation. So if you're using one too, make sure to put the lattice modifiers on top of it. I tend to rename them to avoid confusion. Pick the corresponding lattices and fill out the vertex groups. Now if you play with a lattice in edit mode, the cheek should react. But what we want is to be able to control this with the rig. It's a bit tricky, but let's start simple by adding bones for the cheeks. Here, I had previously snapped the 3D cursor to the cheek when adding the lattice. It's best to have it snapped to the origin of the lattice when adding the bone. I orient mine so it roughly matches the orientation of the lattice, but it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Give it a name, Symmetrize. Next, give vertex groups with the same names to the lattices and assign all their vertices to these. Finally, parent the lattices to the rig using the armature deform option. Moving the bones should give a good result. Now would be time to rework the cheek vertex groups if needed. I don't use a reference here, but I encourage you to do so. Here, I wanted to check the results with a subdivision surface modifier on, and my character's ear feathers exploded. Chopping of the body when preparing for the tutorial broke stuff. Let's just hide that. Now that the vertex group stuff is done, Let's focus on the rig. For now, the bones work, but aren't linked to the rest of the face. The simplest solution seems to be parenting the bones to the head controller. 
except doing this breaks the cheeks. The cheek vertices are now receiving both the deformation from the rick and the deformation from the lattices. It doesn't matter if the cheekbones are directly moved or not. If they move in post space, they'll deform the lattices, who will in return deform the mesh. The only way to move a lattice without deforming the mesh is to do so in object mode. But we still need bones to control them when we actually want them to deform the cheeks. The only way I've found so far is to use an intermediary armature. It'll be parented to the head bone of the character and hold deformation bones for the lattices. Start by duplicating the cheekbones you already have. We need to keep a copy to act as controllers in the character rig. Then, separate the cheekbones into a new armature using P. The lattice's armature modifier need to have its object changed to the new armature. Now, we want to parent the lattice armature to the head bone of the character's rig. Usually, I'd parent it to the deformation head bone, but I'll parent it to the controller here just to go quicker. Make sure the lattice rig is in object mode and the character rig is in pose mode. Select the head bone and choose bone or bone relative as the parenting option. Now, the lattices should follow the head without deforming the cheeks. The last step is to add a copy transforms constraint to the bones of the lattice rig, targeting their corresponding cheek controller in the character rig. The parenting makes it so that the cheek bones are always sharing the same position as the cheek controllers by default even if the head moves, so the copy transforms technically don't have any effect until you move the controllers themselves. At least that's how I understand it. It should work just fine now. Just to make the cheek path expression easier to pose, I like to add another controller to the cheeks. After snapping the cursor to the head of the cheek bone, we can duplicate it, flip it without F, snap it to the cursor and flip it again. It'll be perfectly aligned with the cheek bone while staying behind it. You can parent the cheek bone to the new bone. And since flipping a bone removes its parent for some reason, make sure to parent the new bone to the head bone. I forget in this video. Now, when you scale up the new bone, it'll push away the cheek bone and make the puffy cheek expression. If your character has rigged lips, puckering the lips gives a much better result. But scaling the parent also scales the child. If you find it makes the cheeks too big, you can add an intermediary bone by duplicating the cheek bone again and scaling the new intermediary bone down. You can parent the cheek bone to the intermediary bone. The intermediary bone's parent doesn't change. The last step will be to give a copy scale constraint to the intermediary bone, targeting the head bone. Now, when scaling the controller, the intermediary bone gets pushed away, but its scale doesn't change. The cheekbone can still be scaled manually. Voila! The cheek rig is done. This lattice technique can be reused all over the body. The face is the easiest to do though, since lattices for every part of the face can share the same lattice armature parented to the head bone. Other parts needs extra armatures parented to corresponding bones like a bicep lattice armature parented to the arm bone for example. To me, the fact that you need extra lattice armatures for other parts of the body is an annoying downside, so I only use it for the face. So if you know any other ways to achieve the same result, suggestions are welcome. This video is now over. I'll leave a little recap of the parenting and constraints in the description. Don't hesitate to like and subscribe if you found it useful. Cheers!